Today I'm sharing 21 spring DIYs and home decor ideas. I'll be showing you everything from floral arrangements to decorated eggs, interior home decor and decorating, and even a few thrift flips. I hope you enjoyed this spring DIY compilation. Let's get started with number one. The first DIY that we're gonna do is this carrot flower arrangement. Now I love flowers. They have such a beautiful way to brighten up a room and to bring a freshness to it. This container that I'm using, I got from Home Goods and it was on clearance for $8, so I totally scored there. And this is what else you're gonna to need to make this arrangement. First, I got some floral foam and I put it inside of my small container. And then I took that small container and I put it inside the larger container. Then I got my raffia and I tucked it inside the vacant space that was between my smaller container and my larger container. Now this does double duty. The raffia will hold the carrots in place, but it will also hide the smaller container inside so you don't see it and you don't see the floral foam either. Next I took my carrots and I pushed them inside the raffia. Now I put the carrots in between the raffia and the glass front. The reason why I do that is because you want to be able to see, look how pretty all those cute little carrots are. You want to be able to see the carrots and you don't want the raffia to be in the way. So make sure that when you put the carrots in that you have it facing the glass with nothing blocking it. Once all of my carrots were evenly spaced throughout the entire perimeter of the container, it was time to add the flowers. Now all of my flowers are from the Dollar Tree and the greenery is from Michael's. So I started off with my tallest flower first, which is my hyacinth. I placed it in the center and then I added my tulips and my other white flowers around it to make a dome. Now down at the base, I took some flowers and I trimmed the ends off with some wire clippers so that they were shorter and they could be closer down by the, way, the base. Now, after I had all of my flowers situated, I added the greenery. Now, I love the way that this greenery looks. I specifically chose it because I wanted it to kind of be floppy and hang and billow over the container. And I again spaced them out basically at the bottom because I wanted that look of it hanging over. And I really like the way that the greenery ended up looking. I really like the way that these monochromatic flowers, the white flowers ended up looking. I think it really makes the carrots pop because after all they are the star but if you wanted to choose a vibrant colored flower or a different kind of spring flower, that would work as well. My second DIY are these yarn carrots. They are by far the easiest and simplest and fastest DIY of the day. I took a ruler and pencil and traced out a six inch tall by two and a half inch wide carrot form. Then I took a knife and sliced along the lines to cut out my carrot shape. I repeated this process three times to get three carrots. I got this yarn at Michael's and I love the way it looks. It's a beautiful cream and gold. How I started was I got a dab of hot glue and I put it onto the end of my yarn. And then I wrapped and I hot glued and I wrapped and I hot glued and I made sure that they were right next to each other, that the yarn was right next to each other and I just kept going until I got to the top. Once I got to the top, I coiled everything around and then it was all finished and ready for the topper. Now, this green topper is from the Dollar Tree and I just cut off a segment with my wire cutters and it was a little too long, so I got some scissors and I trimmed off the top, and then I poked it right into the top of my carrot to finish off the look. Now again, I decided to go with a more monochromatic color scheme for my carrot. I've seen a bunch on Pinterest that are made out of burlap or some fabric. So just pick a design or a color that fits in with your decor and that would work. Mm -hmm. 
Number three is this bird's nest display. Now I love decorating with bird's nests in the spring. I think it's because it's a promise of a new life and a fresh start. Now I'm gonna need some sticks to prop up my nests. So I went outside and I just gathered up a bunch of sticks. I laid them out and I spray painted them gold in a few coats and then I let them dry completely. Then next I took my Dollar Tree egg ornaments. Now this is not the color I was going for so I needed to change those. But first thing, I needed to pull the ribbon off of the top of the ornaments. They came right out, easy peasy. And then I took them outside and I spray painted them gold. Again, with the same gold spray paint that I used for the sticks. And then I let them dry completely. Now, these eggs have kind of a bumpy look to them because they had glitter on them. I personally like it because I think it looks more natural. If you want a smooth surface, you could just use some plastic eggs. To create a base for my stick tree, I took a votive candle holder and placed a piece of floral foam inside. And then I began arranging my sticks. I put the sticks close together and angled them slightly away from each other to form a funnel shape. This shape will allow me to securely place my nest right inside the funnel. To cover the foam at the base, I'm adding Dollar Tree reindeer moss and securing the moss to the base with floral pins. Next, I'm placing my first nest into the sticks. I pushed the nest deep into the sticks so it was secure and wouldn't topple over when I added my bird and eggs. The base for my second nest is a square piece of foam. I'm covering the entire piece of foam in the same reindeer moss and tacking it down with floral pins. As an alternative option, you could hot glue the moss to the base as well. Then I began adding my sticks. These sticks are slightly shorter than the first sticks because this nest will be displayed lower than the first. Again, I placed my sticks close together in a funnel shape and then I wedged the second nest in between the sticks. To create extra texture and interest inside my nest, I'm placing a handful of shredded tan paper to the center of each nest. Next, it's time for my birds to find their home. Each nest gets one pretty bird and I'm adding it right to the center of the nest. And finally, I'm scattering the gold spray painted eggs throughout the display. Now you can't have Easter without a few little bunnies hopping around. So my number four project are these Mod Podged freestanding bunnies. They are all dressed up and ready for Easter. Now the first thing that I did was I selected my scrapbook paper. Now I chose this light blue paper, but this is where you can get creative. You can choose a bright color. You could choose one with a pattern or a different texture on it. So after I had selected my paper, I put my wood bunny down on the paper and then I traced around it to get an outline. Then I cut it out. Next, I got some Mod Podge and a sponge brush and I liberally added some Mod Podge to the surface of the bunny. And then I carefully lined up my paper bunny and placed it on top of the wood bunny. Then I got my handy dandy kitchen scraper and smoothed it out to get rid of all the air bubbles. And then I let it dry for about an hour. I have found that when I let it dry for about an hour, that when I go to put the top layer of Mod Podge on it, that it doesn't have as many bubbles or wrinkling on it. So after I let it dry for an hour, I got some more Mod Podge and my sponge brush, and I added another layer, and then I let it dry completely, which was for me overnight. Now I decided to dress my bunnies in their Sunday best. So I got some pearl beads from the Dollar Tree and I took one of them and I got some hot glue and I put a dab of hot glue onto the pearl bead and then I stuck it on the tail. And then I have a beautiful trim that had some lace and some pearls on it that match with the pearl bead. I cut out a segment, I got some hot glue, I hot glued it and I put it around the neck of the bunny. And then I had some thin ribbon and I tied it into a bow 
and then I hot glued that bow into the center of the trim. Finally, I wanted my bunnies to be displayed upright. So I got a triangular block and I got some hot glue and I hot glued it to the back of my bunny. And now my bunnies can be freestanding. So now we have the birds, the bird's nests, and so now it's time for the bird house. I got this bird house at Michael's and I had a 60% off coupon, yay, which made this house less than $3. I decided to stain it, so I used my trusted ebony midwax stain. I sponge brushed the stain all over the house, and then I got a paper towel and I rubbed off the excess because I didn't want it to be too saturated. And then also, when I was finished, I wanted it to look a little more aged and rustic, so I got a piece of sandpaper, and I sanded down the edges on the roof and on the base, and a little bit on the front and the sides, and so that way it looked a little more worn and weathered, which made it look perfect in my book. So now that we've made our birdhouse look old and rugged, it's time to make it pretty. I'm using the same pearl beads that I used for the bunny tails, they're from the Dollar Tree again, and I got some hot glue, and I added a little bit of hot glue to each one of the pearls, and I stuck it to the opening, the circular opening to the birdhouse, and then I also took a line of hot glue and placed it around the base, and I added the pearls to the entire perimeter of the base. I love the way it looks. It makes it look rustic and kind of country chic at the same time, and just so you know, it took one bag, to do this entire house, one bag of pearls. To display my birdhouse, I'm placing it on top of a glass cake stand. I've added some extra greenery and a few little mini eggs, and then I'm putting a glass cloche over the top. Today I'm going to be doing a spring thrift flip. Now I found this wheelbarrow and the wreath inside at a local thrift store. We are going to transform them and give them a makeover. Now the first thing that I did was I decided to paint this wheelbarrow. The brown stain on it was not doing it any favors, so I decided to paint it with some white chalk paint, just some spray paint that I got at Walmart. I took my wheelbarrow outside and I flipped it upside down so I could start with the underside first. I sprayed the paint evenly until it was completely covered, and then I let it dry for about 30 minutes. Then I flipped it over and spray painted the top side until the entire wheelbarrow was all white. Then I let it dry overnight. The next day I was looking at it and it seemed a little stark white, so I decided to kind of make it a little more rustic and a little more aged, so I got a piece of sandpaper. Now this sandpaper is a light sandpaper, so it wasn't gonna take too much of the paint off. So I just sanded down the edges of the wheelbarrow and on the sides and a little bit in the bowl. And it really gave it that aged patina that I was looking for, so it wasn't so stark white. To jazz this wheelbarrow up a little bit more, I got a beaded spring garland from Michaels. It was 40% off. However, on the day I went, I had a coupon for 25% off more of my entire purchase. So this garland was around $6. I loved the beads on it. However, I didn't really like the little mini eggs that were on it. So I decided to cut those off. Because they're styrofoam, they came off really easily with a sharp knife. Now what I did was I cut down the center of the egg, not all the way through, just about halfway through, and then I took the string and I pulled it up through the egg. Now the good thing about these eggs is that I'll be able to use them for another project because I only cut halfway through, so the front side is still really pretty and will be great in the wreath that I'm going to be transforming later on. Now that the eggs are off of my garland, I can place the wood beads right on top of the rim of my wheelbarrow. Now what I did was I got some hot glue and I placed a small line on the top of the rim and then I added my wooden beads right to the center of the hot glue. I continued to hot glue and place the beads in the glue until the rim was covered with beads. 
When I got to the end, I snipped off the end of the string and hot glued a single bead in place to complete the circle and to complete this wheelbarrow makeover. Over garland, so I decided I would make a tassel to go on top of the cloche. So the first thing I wanted to do was make some tassels to go at either end of my little garland. Now what I did was I used some really thin ribbon. This is just from Walmart, just thin white ribbon. And I got a piece of cardboard and I began to wrap the ribbon around the cardboard. I did it 25 times and then I took a small piece of ribbon, threaded it under the ribbon on the cardboard pulled it up and tied the ribbon into a tight knot. Then I slid the ribbon off the card, straightened out the loops, got a pair of sharp scissors, and cut the ends of the loops. Now to place my tassel on the ends of this garland, I took the string that was coming out through the bottom portion of the garland, and I wrapped it around the center of the tassel, then threaded it up through the beads on the garland. I threaded the string back through a couple of beads and then hot glued the string to itself. Once my tassel was securely on the garland, I took a segment of ribbon and tied it around the tassel, about a half an inch down from the top, and then wrapped it around several times and then hot glued it in place. I have always wanted one of these beaded garlands and so this was such a great use of these extra beads because now I have a beautiful garland to decorate with. The next item that we're going to make over are these mini grapevine wreaths. Now they're from the same thrift store that I got the wheelbarrow at. When I got up to the cashier, she gave me both of them for a dollar, even though it said 99 cents a piece on each one of the wreaths. So yay for bargains. Now to begin decorating this wreath, I'm going to start with a wooden skewer. Now you might wonder why I'm using a wooden skewer, but it's going to help me to display my wreath later on. So I'm going to cut the skewer to size and hot glue it to the center bottom of my wreath. Next, I'm going to add some beautiful spring hydrangeas, some white hydrangea flowers, and also some other spring stems. And then if you remember our cast off eggs that we cut off from the garland. Well, it's time to use them. I'm going to place three of them in the center on the bottom. I'm going to hot glue them in place. So don't throw things away. You might be able to use them later on because all I did was I took the cut side that was on the back and I placed that to the back of the wreath so you couldn't even see it. You could only see the smooth side. So we are repurposing some things that we didn't need anymore on this wreath. And then the final addition to our wreath are a few blue ribbons. I just placed one on top of the other, I tied it into a bow, and then I hot glued that bow to the top of my wreath. In the end, I did decide to add two more hydrangea flowers to the center of the bow. I just hot glued them in place and I think that it ties all of the florals together. First off, we're going to be creating a vase out of an egg, a candy cup, and a place card holder out of some medium-sized plastic eggs from the Dollar Tree. I opened up the eggs and separated them by pulling them apart. I took the first half of the egg and laid it open side down on the table. I put a dollop of hot glue in the center of the top and then place the second half of the egg on top. I held it in place until the glue was dry. I repeated the process with the three different colored eggs. Once my eggs were formed, I decided to wrap them in a variety of different kinds of materials. The first one that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wrap it in this jute cord that I got from the Dollar Tree. I'll start at the bottom. I got my jute cord and a little bit of hot glue and I placed a line of hot glue around the bottom rim of the egg and placed the jute cord on top and began to swirl the cord around the egg, hot gluing as I went. 
I made sure the lines of jute cord were right next to each other so there were no gaps where you could see the underlying egg. Once I got to the top, I added a line of glue and then I pressed it firmly in place and then snipped off the excess cord. To wrap my second egg, I'm going to use this raffia. Again, it's from the Dollar Tree. It comes in a package of three. I've already used a few, so I'm getting low on raffia. I'm gonna have to head back soon. But I'm gonna do it the exact same way that I did the first egg. I'm gonna get a line of hot glue. I'm going to place the raffia right in the hot glue. I'm going to continue to hot glue and wrap, keeping the lines really close together so that you can't see the underlying egg. I'll do it until I get to the very top, snip off the excess, and then hot glue it all in place and press it firmly together. And finally, I'm going to be using this yarn. I just repeated the process. I hot glued and I twirled the yarn around the egg form until I got to the top and then I just hot glued it all together. And now I have my three different varieties of egg stands. Now to the inside of my little egg cups, I'm going to add a variety of different things. The first one is going to be a carnation. I got this bunch at Walmart for 97 cents. I got a pair of snips and I cut a little stem off of the bunch of flowers. I took that one carnation and I placed it right inside of my cup. Look how cute this thing is. I chose the raffia. It's got that cute little carnation inside and it just is a little vase. I love it. My second one, I'm going to do some jelly beans. So I just filled up my little yarn one with some Starburst jelly beans because in my opinion, those are the best. So you could add some Cadbury eggs or some chocolate, whatever kind of candy is your favorite, add to this cute little cup. You could give these to guests as they came by, to some friends for Easter. You could even put these at each place setting when you were having an Easter dinner. Speaking of place settings, my final one is the raffia one. And I put a little bit of dried grass inside of the egg cup. And then I placed a white speckled egg in it. And then I just got a strip of paper with my name on it and placed it right in front of the egg. How cute would this be as a place card holder right in the center of a plate? And again, these were so affordable to make. The only money that I spent was on the eggs and I ended up only using three of them. So I have three extra eggs for another project. I had the twine, I had the raffia, I did buy the jute. So this project only cost me $2, which in my opinion is a great bargain. My second project is this Mod Podge egg. Can you see that? Oh my goodness, I love this thing. And I did it with another one of those Dollar Tree plastic eggs. However, this egg was a little bit larger. It didn't come in a pack. It was an individual egg. So the only money that I spent on this was $1 on that egg. What I did was I found some paper that I already had, just some scrapbook paper, and I cut it into some strips about one third inch wide. The reason why I'm cutting it into thinner strips is because it will lay nicer on my egg because my egg curves. If the pieces were thicker, they would kind of bunch up and wrinkle on the edges. So the thinner pieces are, are better to work with. And then I got my Mod Podge out. I also got a sponge brush and I liberally added all of this Mod Podge to the surface of the entire egg. Now, this is a messy process. There's no other way to get around it. Your fingers are gonna get glue on them. You just have to embrace the mess. And the good thing about Mod Podge is that it comes off with soap and water, so it's okay, but it's gonna be messy. So once I was finished getting Mod Podge all over the egg, I got my strips of paper. I started at the bottom, that's where I placed the end of the paper, and I wrapped it up over the top to the other side. I continued to put the strips of paper on the bottom, wrap it over, bottom wrap it over until I had all of my egg completely covered in the paper. Now one thing 
about this particular egg is that my strips of paper did not reach all the way around to the other side. So I did have a vacant space on the back side. No problem. What I did was I took the strips of paper that were remaining and I trimmed little pieces off. So I had some shorter pieces and then I just Mod Podge those into that vacant space. Now I let my Mod Podge dry for about an hour before I added the top layer. Again, I just got my sponge brush out and I completely covered the top in the Mod Podge. And then I let it dry, which for me was about eight hours. Once it was completely dry, it was time to embellish it. Now I decided to use on my egg a thicker kind of satin ribbon that was gonna go all around the center of it. On top of that, I added this kind of Robin's blue egg chevron ribbon. I placed that right into the center. Again, I'm just hot gluing this stuff just directly to the egg. And then I'm also using some more of that raffia and I wrapped that around and then I tied everything into a bow. Once it was in a bow, I got my little raffia pieces and I kind of wanted to make them a little more whimsical as opposed to just one straight little piece. So I just tore them. These things tear so easy. So I tore them and I got these cute little strips, just these little, just these little pieces. And then I pulled another one of these carnation flowers off the stem of my bunch of flowers and I hot glued that right into the center of the bow. If this is the first time that you're visiting my channel, welcome, I'm Lisa. I do DIYs and home decor on my channel. I post weekly videos. I would love to have you join me, so please subscribe. My third egg design are these ornaments that I got from the Dollar Tree. They're wood ornaments, they came in a package of six, and the way I'm going to spruce these up is by adding a Pell piece of pastel green scrapbook paper to the top of them. I took my egg and I placed it on top of the scrapbook paper. I got a pencil and I traced around the egg and I got the exact size I needed and then I cut out the egg shape. We're going to adhere the paper to the wooden egg with Mod Podge again. I love this stuff, I think it's just magical. And I got my sponge brush, I put the Mod Podge directly on top of the wooden egg again be generous with the Mod Podge because you don't want to skimp. You want it to, to adhere to the egg really, really well. So I put the Mod Podge down on top of the wooden egg and then I carefully lined up my piece of paper that I had cut out and I placed it on top. I got my kitchen scraper and I pushed out any bubbles and made it really smooth onto the egg. I painted on a top layer of Mod Podge by generously coating the entire top side of the egg using a sponge brush. Once it was fully covered, I let the eggs dry for several hours. To embellish these eggs, I'm going to place a wide burlap and lace ribbon around the center of the eggs. I got some hot glue and I put a line of hot glue onto the egg and I placed the ribbon right in the center wrapped it around to the back and hot glued it all together. And then to the center of this ribbon, I'm adding some more of those pastel chevron ribbons. I have different colors. I've got a lovely blue, a cream, and a pink chevron ribbon. I'm going to place that right into the center. I'm going to hot glue it all together. And then to finish off the look, I'm going to add a small hydrangea flower and I'm just gonna hot glue that on there and that's gonna tie it all together. Now that my eggs are finished, I'm going to add this thin ribbon to the hole. I used a wooden skewer to poke a hole into the paper and through the existing hole in the wood ornament. This provided easy access for my ribbon. I just threaded it through the center and I tied a knot on the top to tie it together and make sure that it was really secure. And then I would be fun to add these little egg ornaments to my dogwood branches. So I just placed them in random spots around the, the arrangement. And I think it adds just another extra little bit of spring.
Now I got the frame from the Dollar Tree and that's the only money that I spent. I only spent $1 on this DIY. So I got the frame and then me and my sweet little daughter, my six year old, went on a little nature hunt outside. And we gathered up about 26 inch to one foot long twigs. And then I gave them a good wash to remove any dirt or bugs. I prefer my bugs to stay outside so that's one part of spring that i do not want in my house so i made sure that they were really really washed really well the twigs and then i let them air dry once my sticks were fully dry i got a general layout of where i wanted them to be i placed the sticks around the frame and then i got my hot glue gun and i put a line of hot glue directly onto the frame and then i placed my sticks right on top and pressed down firmly so they would stay in place. And then I continue to add hot glue and sticks to the frame. I like the fact that these sticks aren't straight and that the little curves and knots in them make it look a little more natural and help to resemble a bird's nest. After I was hot gluing everything into place, I let it dry and to make it look a little more natural, I got some of the smaller sticks and I put those basically in the corners where the straight sticks didn't reach all the way across the bottom or the sides of the frame. I continued hot gluing the sticks onto the frame until the frame was completely covered. After my sticks were all in place, I put some moss on. I got this moss at the Dollar Tree and I got some hot glue and I put it in the corners and in various spots around the frame. I just pressed that moss right onto it. And then also at the top, there was some places where you could still see the frame directly. And so I put some moss on top of the frame so you couldn't see the frame and it looked like everything was cohesive and one bird nest frame. This bird nest only cost me, like I said, $1 because I had everything that I needed or I foraged outside for it. So I have seen some frames, some twig frames online for $125 and I don't even like them as much as I like this frame. So go ahead and make your own frame. It's a perfect piece for spring and I really think that you'll like it. Now to keep with the really cheap theme, I found a picture online and I just printed it off. I searched for free spring bird printables and there were a lot of options that came up. I decided on this one. If you like this picture, I will leave a link to where I got it on the website so you can find it and just print it off. And that's what I did. And then I placed it inside of my frame to pull the look together. I got a set of 18 at the Dollar Tree, but they were not the color that I wanted, so I decided to paint them in two different ways. The first way is this gold egg. Now I just got some spray paint and I took my little eggs outside and I opened them up. This is very important because as you're spray painting them, if they're laying flat on your piece of paper, they won't go rolling anywhere. And then also they get really great coverage because you can paint the entire egg at one time. So I sprayed a few coats of paint on the eggs until they were covered and then I let them fully dry. I painted my second egg in this light blue craft paint that I got from Michaels. I used a sponge brush and I painted a few coats of paint on it until you could no longer see the original egg color. And then I also wanted some gold flecks. I just love the way that the little speckles look on the eggs. So again, I used some gold craft paint and a pretty cheap toothbrush and I dipped the toothbrush bristles into the gold paint and then I flicked it all over the eggs. I let it dry and then I turned the eggs over and I repeated the process. I dipped the toothbrush into the paint and I flicked the gold paint over the eggs to get the pretty little speckles. Paint was such a cheap and easy way to make these Dollar Tree eggs look high-end. I'm going to add these eggs to this glass vase. I alternated between gold and blue eggs and filled the vase to the very top. 
After I place my speckled eggs and my gold eggs into the bottom of my vase, I'm going to add in some dogwood branches that I got at the Dollar Tree and some little willow branches that I got at Michael's. Now what is a spring display without a beautiful bird cage that I spruced up with a variety of bows? I got three different varieties of spring ribbons. I cut my ribbon into a 24 inch segment and made three identical loops. Then I took a three inch segment of floral wire and wrapped it around each of the three loops and then twisted the wire together in the back to secure the loops together. I repeated the process with the blue plaid ribbon I cut a longer 30 inch segment of ribbon this time because I made five identical loops. Again, I used a three inch piece of floral wire to wrap around the loops to secure them in place. My last two ribbons are made from a cream and gold chevron ribbon, which I'm simply going to tie into a bow. Now that all four of my ribbons are made, I'm going to place them all together. I intertwine the loops and placed the chevron bows on each side of the larger bows, and then got another segment of floral wire and twisted the wire around the entire bow to secure it all together. Once my bow was completely formed, I wired it onto the top of my birdcage using that same floral wire. At the bottom of my bird cage, I'm gonna make a little nest. Now I got this raffia from the Dollar Tree. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna unwrap it and then I'm going to twist it around into a circle, kind of like a bird's nest. And then I'm also going to add some sparkly lights. These are just little twinkle lights, just battery operated lights, and I'm going to wrap those around my little bird nest too because how cute would that be at night? to have a little bird's nest light up. I simply placed my little bird's nest in the bottom of the bird cage. Now that my little raffia bird's nest and the lights are in the bottom of the bird cage, I'm going to add in this little bird house that I'm just gonna open this cage right back up and place the bird house right inside. Now that all of my large pieces are in place, I'm going to add a few little small things throughout the tablescape. Now I've got these little mini grapevine wreaths at Michael's. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that same raffia that I put in my bird cage, I'm going to wrap it up into a little circular form and I'm going to put it in the center of the grapevine wreath. Essentially, I'm just plugging it up so I can add another one of those beautiful painted eggs that we made earlier. Also, I didn't mind that the raffia was draping over the wreath a little bit because it kind of adds to that unkempt look that a bird's nest would have. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make these two no-sew girl gnomes. They were so easy to make and the form that we are using is something that you might find at a cemetery. The first thing that I do when I create my gnomes is I get a form. Now in the past I've used some styrofoam cones, I've used some wood triangles, I've used some little pom-poms, and today I'm going to use some cemetery vases. What? Yeah. I was at the Dollar Tree in the floral section and I came across these vases that were right next to the faux flowers. And I pulled it out and I thought, you know, I wonder if I turn this upside down, if it would work as a form for my gnome. And guess what? It does and it is a great choice. For the shaggy beard on my pretty little gnomes, I'm using some yarn that I got at Michael's. Now this cream colored yarn is a little wavy and it's just perfect for their pretty little hair. To create the beard, you're gonna essentially make a giant tassel. 
So you can either get a piece of cardboard or a book. I'm using a clipboard. Fun fact about me, I love clipboards. <laughs> I have them all over my house. I love them. I love making notes on them. I just use them all the time. So a clipboard was an obvious choice for me. So what I did was I took the end of my yarn and I placed it right underneath the clip and then I just began to loop it around the clipboard and around and around. Now, I made about 50 loops in my to make my beard. I want it to be really shaggy. If you're a girl and you've got a beard, it might as well be the biggest beard that you can have and just rock it and own it, right? So once I was done with looping my beard around the clipboard, I took a piece of yarn and I slid it underneath the top part of the yarn. I made a loose knot and then I pulled it off. So after I pulled it off, I made sure that it was all nice and straight and then I tied the knot on again. So I took that little piece of yarn and I tied it on really tight into a tight knot. And then I got a pair of really sharp material scissors and I cut the bottom of the loops so that the strands of yarn would lay flat. Once I was done creating my tassel, I placed it on top of my form. I held it up and I took those same sharp scissors and I cut off any straggling pieces and I made the bottom of the yarn really nice and flat. Then I took it back off, I got some hot glue, I added a decent amount of hot glue to the top of the form, and then I placed my yarn tassel back on top and smoothed it all out. I pressed it down pretty firmly so that it would adhere really well to the form. Now the pokey part on the cemetery base actually came in really handy because it held the giant yarn beard tassel in place while I got everything hot glued on top. So who knew that a burial plot base would work as a gnome form? For my spring gnomes, I decided to do some girls because I thought it would be bright and cheery and I wanted to embellish them with all kinds of flowers and pearls and ribbons. Now it's time to make the hat. Now this is a no sew gnome, so we're just gonna be using material and hot glue. Now the material that I got for this first gnome is from Hobby Lobby, and I needed a 12 by 12 inch square piece. So I cut out that piece, and then I hemmed the bottom of the hat first. I put a line of hot glue along the edge of the fabric and folded it up about a third of an inch to create my finished edge. Then I flipped the fabric over so the finished side was face up. I put a line of hot glue along one edge and then I folded the fabric over and pressed the edges together. Now I wanted a little pizzazz at the top of the hat so I got a ruler and I measured two inches down and I cut some strips about a half an inch apart and then cut down two inches lengthwise. And I did that along the entire top of the hat. Once the slits were cut and the glue was dry, I flipped the hat inside out so the finished side was now on the outside. All of the materials and measurements for both gnomes will be listed in the description box below. Then I gathered the top of the hat together and I got a piece of twine and I tied a bow around it. Now the twine's gonna help in two ways. The first way is that it's going to close the top of the hat so it's nice and secure, but it's also going to make it so the little strips of the top look like a pom-pom. Now to embellish this little lady a little bit further, I got some of this chiffon trim. It's from Hobby Lobby and I got a little bit of hot glue and I put some hot glue around the hat and I just placed that trim right along that hot glue that was pretty close to the brim. And then I wanted to embellish her just a little bit further. It is spring after all. So I got some hydrangeas from the Dollar Tree. I pulled the hydrangeas off of the stem and I also pulled the leaf off of the stem. 
Now there's this little plastic part at the bottom of the leaf. I just pulled that right off and that way when I went to hot glue that onto my trim, it would lay flat. And then I also took those white hydrangeas and hot glued those on top of the leaf as well. Once my hat was finished, it was time to put it on my gnome. But before I did that, I wanted it to stand straight up, so I filled it with some polyfill. Now this makes it look really nice and round and has it stand straight up, nice and tall. So after it was filled with the polyfill, I put it on my gnome, I placed it on the top, and I just wiggled it down until I got it right in the place where I wanted it. Once my hat was on my gnome, it was time to put the nose on because the hat was in place, so now it's time for the nose. Again, I'm using these pearls that I got at the Dollar Tree. They're just pearl beads, I love them. And I thought for these girls it would be nice and pretty. So I got a little bit of hot glue and I put it on one of the pearls and I placed it right in the center of my gnome, right underneath the brim of the hat. And I held it there in place until it was nice and dry. Now it's time for the fun part. We are going to style the beard. Now on this gnome, I decided we'd do some braids. So I did a braid on either side. I took a segment of the yarn and I braided it. And then once I got to the bottom, I tied it together with some more of that twine. And then I got a segment of this chenille trim that I used at the bottom of the hat. And it was about a two inch segment. I put a little bit of hot glue in the center and then I pushed them together to form a bow. And then when I had my bow, I hot glued it onto the end of the braid and then I repeated the process on the other side. And that's it for this pretty little gnome. But of course, every girl needs a friend. So I decided to make this gnome as well. Now everything that I did was exactly identical to how I created my first gnome. However, when I got to the hat, I decided to embellish it a little bit differently. Now the material itself is from Joann's fabric. And again, I just cut it into that 12 by 12 square and I hot glued it together. And then I cut those little strips at the top so I'd have a cute little pom pom. And then the embellishments that I'm putting on top are number one, the trim is from Hobby Lobby. And I'm just going to hot glue that around the entire perimeter of the hat. And then I'm also going to put some flowers on it because it is springtime. So these flowers are from Michael's and I just pulled the flower off the stem and the leaf as well, and then I took the leaf and I pulled that plastic part off and then I was able to hot glue it directly onto my hat and it laid nice and flat. And then I took that pink flower. Now, this pink flower had a thicker piece of plastic at the bottom of the flower, so I used some scissors and I cut that off and then I hot glued that onto the hat right in the center of the leaf. Once her hat was done, I wanted it to stand up nice and tall, just like my first gnome. So I added some of that polyfilm inside and then I wiggled the hat right onto the top of the gnome. And then I added the nose. I got that same pearl bead. I added a little bit of hot glue to it and I placed it right under the brim of the hat. And now it's time to style her beautiful beard. So what I did was this time we're gonna do some piggy tails. I divided it in half. I took a little segment and I got some of this trim, this pink trim, the same trim that I have on the hat. And I tied it around the little piggy tail part and I tied it into a bow. And then I repeated the process on the other side until I had two cute little piggy tails. Now both of my pretty little ladies are done and it's time to style them. So I'm going to put them on my buffet table. I'm going to add the bird's nest that we made a few weeks ago. I'm going to put a few little speckled eggs around and then I'm going to add a chalkboard sign that tells people that there is a phenomenal egg hunt this way. Today I am surrounded by three spring and Easter flower arrangements. I'm going to show you how to make these and then I'm going to show you how to display them as a centerpiece.
The first centerpiece that I'm going to be doing today is this beautiful flower arrangement. It's cream and it's got some beautiful spring speckled eggs. I love using interesting containers for my flower arrangements. Especially for seasonal decor, I don't want to go out and buy a new vase or container. I just don't want to spend the money. So I rummaged through my kitchen cabinets and I came across this beautiful soup tureen that I got at Dillard's a few years ago. I don't use it very often and I knew it would be the right size and the right color for this particular flower arrangement. Now you can get really creative with your containers. Last week I used a trifle bowl for a carrot flower arrangement. You can use a punch bowl or a water pitcher. Just look through your cabinets and see what you have because you might find a beautiful container. Now I filled the inside of my soup tureen with some floral foam and I tacked it together with some floral pins. And then I got some Dollar Tree moss and I spread that over the top of the foam and then I tacked it down with some more of those floral pins. Now most craft places have floral pins, however if you can't find some you can always use hot glue and that would work too. The cream color on the soup tureen was my inspiration to pick out my cream colored flowers. All of the flowers on this particular arrangement are either from Michaels or from Hobby Lobby. So what I did was I got the prominent flower that I wanted to see the very most and I placed it right into the center. And then I added the tall flowers towards the back in the center. And then I placed the shorter flowers to the sides and in the front until it formed a dome shape. Now I like to place my flowers in first because then I can get them all situated. And then afterwards I got my greenery, which again was from Michaels and Hobby Lobby and I placed it in between the flowers. Now if we stopped at this point, this would be a beautiful flower arrangement for any season or party. However, we are going to theme this spring and Easter, so I'm going to add in some egg picks that I got at Michael's. The color on them is fantastic. It goes really well with the cream, and I love the little speckles on them, so I'll just spread those throughout the arrangement. The final piece is this cream and gold and burlap ribbon. I wanted to put a cute little bow on the side, so I cut each piece into a foot long segment. I made one loop in each of the ribbons and I got a piece of floral wire and I wrapped it around the ribbons. And then I got another floral pin and I put it right through the center of my bow and then I attached it right onto the floral foam on my centerpiece. To display this arrangement as a centerpiece, I'm going to add it to a large silver tray. I'm going to put some of those yarn carrots that we made last week around it and on top of the tray to add that extra little bit of spring and Easter. This cabbage flower arrangement is probably one of my favorite arrangements that I have ever done. I didn't even have to look for a container. All I had to do was decide if I wanted a purple cabbage or a green cabbage. For this spring flower arrangement, I needed one head of cabbage, various spring flowers, one cup, some rubber bands, and asparagus. The first thing that I did was I evened off the bottom of the cabbage. I did not want my cabbage to go rolling away with my flowers inside. So I got a knife and I trimmed the bottom of the cabbage so it was nice and flat and even. And then I chose a glass that would fit inside my cabbage. I traced out the top part of the glass right onto the top of the cabbage with a Sharpie. And then I took a knife and began to cut along the circular tracing. I made fairly deep cuts into the cabbage because I'm going to need a lot of space for my cup. I began peeling away the cabbage layers and then I took a spoon and began to hollow it out. Now, let me tell you, I felt like it was Halloween and I was carving a pumpkin. It is so dense and thick at the core that I had cabbage just flying everywhere. I found some in my hair. So be prepared to roll up your sleeves and get to work when you're hollowing out your cabbage. Once I was finished coring out my cabbage, I put my cup inside. I just placed it in and I pressed it down so it was nice and secure. And then it was time to add my flowers. 
Now, these flowers are from my yard. I know you guys know that I live in Florida and I am so lucky that I have flowers that bloom all year long so I can really take advantage of them. However, if you don't have flowers that you can just get from your yard, you can just go to your grocery store and pick some up there. They're not that expensive, especially because you'll only need a handful of them. So what I did with my flowers was I put them into bunches and then I got some rubber bands and I rubber band these stems together. I made about three or four different bunches. Doing it this way makes it really easy to put them in your cup for your flower arrangement because they're already just the way you want them to be. The colors are already where they need to be. The heights are already where they need to be. And then I did the same thing with my asparagus. I put three asparagus in each bunch and then I rubber band them together. And then I placed my flowers inside of the cup. First I added some water to the cup and then I placed in my flowers. I just put them in so they were nice and even and then I went back through and I put the asparagus, just tucked it inside of the flowers so it added extra height and I think it was fun and unique to add the asparagus because how many times do you see a flower arrangement with asparagus in it? Not very often. So it was a fun way to add a little extra bit of spring to this arrangement. One thing about this cabbage flower arrangement was that I made this several hours earlier and then it's just been sitting in the fridge. So if you're making this for a party, just know that you can make it earlier on the day and then put it in the fridge and then pop it out and it's still gonna look really great. Now, how pretty is this arrangement? I just love the way it came out and it was so easy to make. I can picture this on a big Easter buffet table right next to the fruit and veggies. Now, the way that I'm going to display this as a centerpiece is I'm going to put it on this glass plate and then I'm also going to add some pearlescent ceramic bunnies. The final spring centerpiece is this beautiful bird's nest flower arrangement. Now the container that I got is from the Dollar Tree and it is simply a basket liner. I'm going to fill it up with some floral foam and then I'm going to add some shredded paper to the top of the foam and then I'm going to tack it all together with some floral pins. Again, if you don't have floral pins, you can just hot glue everything together. I wanted some bright white flowers for this flower arrangement. I wanted them to pop against the brown container and the wreath that was down below. Now all of my flowers and greenery are from the Dollar Tree. So what I did was I took my stems and I trimmed them into little segments. I had some hydrangeas and I kept a lot of the stems long and then I also trimmed some that were a little bit shorter. And then I began to add my flowers to my foam. I started in the back with my tallest flowers and then I worked my way forward and I added the flowers to the side and to the front that were a little bit shorter until I had a dome shape. Next I added in my greenery in between the flowers. When you add the greenery up against the white flowers, it really makes those flowers pop. So if there were any vacant spaces, I put some greenery in there. I wanted to add something bright and springy to this arrangement and I found these speckled eggs, these turquoise and blue speckled eggs at Ross. They were only $3.99 for a set of nine. So what I did was I got some wooden skewers and I poked them through the center of the egg. And the eggs were just styrofoam so the sticks went right in. And then I trimmed a few of the sticks so I could have a variation in height. And I think that the color on these is a great accent, but I wanted a little bit more color to it as well. So I decided to add a few turquoise and blue ribbons. So I got some ribbons and I cut them into some segments. I placed one ribbon on top of the other and then I tied it into a bow. And then I took that bow and I got some hot glue and I hot glued it right onto the stick so it had just that extra little bit of texture and brightness. Once my egg picks were finished, I placed them inside of my flower arrangement. And I love the extra pop of color that it brings and the extra little bit of spring. After I was finished, I took my container because it is a little more flimsy and I put it inside of this 
grapevine wreath that I got from Michaels. Now this wreath is gonna do double duty. It's going to keep my container in place. It's kind of flimsy and I don't want it to roll away. We don't want to run away centerpiece. But also it looks like a nest, so it's going to keep the theme of a bird's nest arrangement. To display this arrangement as a centerpiece, I'm placing it on my table and then I'm going to add two of those Mod Podge bunnies that we made last week for an extra bit of color and springtime flair. Cupcakes are one of my family's favorite sweet treats. I can make some and they are gobbled up in a blink. Today I'm going to show you how to make some carrot cupcakes and we're going to display them in this beautiful planter so it looks like a springtime arrangement. Like many of you, my shopping time has been limited lately, so I decided to shop my home because I had ample time to do it. So that's where I found all of my items for this arrangement. Nothing that I'm using has been newly purchased, including this container. This was at the bottom of a gift basket that I got at Christmas time. You know, the ones that have all the tasty chocolates and the mugs and all that stuff. Well, today I'm going to transition this into spring. Inside my container, I'm going to add some styrofoam. Now my styrofoam is already covered in plastic, which is really great because we're gonna have food and we don't want any styrofoam pieces to end up in our cupcakes. If it's not covered, you can do it yourself. In the past, I've just covered my foam in aluminum foil and that has worked. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my foam, I'm going to get a ruler and a pencil and I'm going to measure the size of foam that I'm going to need to put into my planter. Then I'm going to get a sharp knife and I'm going to cut along the line to get the size that I need. And then I'm going to take that styrofoam and I'm going to press it into the top of my planter. Now I'm going to repeat the process because I need another section of foam on the other side. So again, I'm going to use my ruler and my pencil, mark out the size that I need get that sharp knife, cut it to size, and then press it into place. When I make my flower arrangements, I like to cover up the foam, which is no different in this arrangement. So I got these mirror strands at Tuesday morning. They were in the gift section. They're just little strands that kind of look like grass. They're plastic, and I'm going to use these versus some floral moss because these are plastic so if they touch the cupcakes it's not a big deal if you were to use real floral moss you might get some little pieces of who knows what in your cupcake and you don't want to eat that so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take these strands and i'm going to place them over the top of the foam that's on the top of my container i'm going to spread it out evenly and then i'm going to get some floral pins and I'm going to tack all of the strands in place so that they are secured to the foam. The next step is to add a few of these wooden skewers to my foam. I'm doing this first because my cupcakes are going to rest on these wooden skewers and these are going to hold them in place. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut my wooden skewers in half with a pair of clippers and then I'm going to take the skewers and I'm going to poke them into my foam at various locations on my container. I made sure that they were evenly spaced apart so that there would be ample room for my cupcakes to be displayed. If you don't have skewers, you could use toothpicks and that would work as well. Every planter needs a little bit of greenery. So again, I just shopped my home and I went through my floral section and I found some leftover leaves from other projects and these are gonna be great in my container. So I'm going to take the stems and I'm going to poke them into the foam at various places throughout the container and I'm going to secure them to the foam again using floral pins.
For the florals in my planter, I'm adding these really pretty bluish hydrangeas that I got from the Dollar Tree a while back. So I'm gonna take the stems of these and I'm going to clip them into about two to three inches long for the stem. And then I'm gonna place them into the foam. I press them down fairly low and I space them in between the sticks where the cupcakes are going to be placed. That way the flowers won't block the cupcakes when they're added to the arrangement. Now that my planter is prepped and ready to go, it's time to make the cupcakes. I decided that since it's spring that a carrot cupcake would be a great choice. Plus it says that there are real carrots in the mix. Therefore it makes it a little healthy, right? We'll pretend. So I'm not just going to leave this as a box mix. I'm going to add it and jazz it up a little bit. It's what I do with all of my box mixes. So to the box mix, I'm going to add one extra egg. I'm going to switch the water out for milk. I'm going to add an additional half cup of sour cream and one teaspoon of vanilla. I'm going to take all of my ingredients, add it to my bowl, and I'm going to mix it. Then I'm going to get my cupcake liners and I'm going to put them in my muffin tin. As soon as they're all lined up and ready to go, I'm going to scoop the batter in with a ice cream scoop. I love using ice cream scoops. There's a few reasons why. Number one, because I feel like it gets the batter into the cupcake with minimal amount of spillage. Plus, I think that you can get an even amount in each muffin tin so that your cupcakes end up to be roughly the same size. And then finally, I'm going to put my cupcakes into the oven, bake them off, take them out, and then let them cool completely. What we're gonna do is we're gonna place our cupcakes on our skewers in our arrangement first. By doing it this way, we will get everything situated before we ice them, because if we ice them first and then put them on our arrangement, there is a high likelihood that it would get smudged and that there would be a fingerprint in the icing and we want our flowers to look as pretty as possible. So the cupcakes are gonna go on first. I centered the bottom of my cupcake to the top of the wooden skewer. Then I pressed the cupcake onto the skewer gently until the skewer poked about three-fourths of the way through the cupcake. I made sure that my skewer wasn't too long because I didn't want the skewer to poke all the way through the cupcake and out the top. I decided to color my white buttercream in a lovely shade of purple. I thought it would go really nicely with my hydrangeas, plus it looked springy to me. So after I had my icing made, I put it in a large storage Ziploc bag. And I also had a large icing tip that I put in the corner, and then I added my icing into the bag. And now I can easily pipe my icing onto my cupcake. Now to pipe the icing onto my cupcake, I'm gonna start in the middle, and then I'm gonna swirl the icing in a circular fashion around the entire cupcake. After I piped on the icing to my cupcakes, I got an offset knife and I spread the icing evenly over the cupcake. And then for a final touch, I added a few sugar pearls to the top to give it that extra little pop of spring. I can imagine this beautiful cupcake arrangement as a centerpiece on an Easter table or a lovely addition to a spring dessert table. I can also see many happy faces for mothers if they got this for a Mother's Day gift. I know I would be delighted. And you could also switch the cupcakes out for muffins or for some sweet rolls, whatever fits your taste the best. And then also as a final reminder, I did just shop my home to get all of the items that I needed to make this. So just because we're spending a lot more time at home right now, doesn't mean that we can't come up with something beautiful. I really appreciate you taking your time and stopping by today. Thank you so much for watching.